I love making little embellishments to hang off the spine of my journals. Out of magazine pages, these beads can be created and glossed in a special effect that makes them kind of pop. And I have done it a number of different ways, but the way that I have discovered in this particular video, I think you'll enjoy. So stick with me, let me tell you a little bit about who I am, and then we'll get started. to do is go through this magazine and find some colors that I find appealing to my eye. And when you're looking at magazine pages, you want to look at either the top or the bottom because the color on the end of the magazine page is the color that is going to be the most prominent when you roll these beads. So I'm putting this into my cutter and I am going about a half inch over and then just sliding the magazine slightly to create that long triangle. And once I do it on one side, I'm going to flip it and turn and cut on the other side until that magazine page is complete. And here is the very last little piece, and we'll get two beads out of that final little sliver of that magazine page. So once I have everything cut, now it is time to roll them. I use just a plain old skewer from my kitchen and I get it started with my thumbs and roll that magazine page until that tip is almost, um, we're almost to the end of that tip, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And once I get there, I'll grab some glitter glue, Elmer's glue, Mod Podge, whatever you have on hand and just coat that tip and continue to roll that to completion. So I'm using just a little bit of glitter glue that I've put in this small little container. Once that is complete, I'm going to pull that off of the skewer and I will go ahead and roll up the rest of these pieces. But see what a nice colorful little bead that makes. So let's just do one more real fast. Just get it into position with my thumbs and then very carefully roll it so that stays centered. And this, as you um, begin to get comfortable with it, it goes a lot faster. And once you get almost to the very end, just take that little bit of glue and glue it into place. Slip it off your skewer and get going with the rest of them. So now we have two complete. And this is the result of all of those little slivers of magazine pages. So look at all these little beads that we made in one short little setting. Now I want to create some additional beads, but I want them to not be from a triangular piece. So I'm looking through this magazine page again and trying to determine, to determine exactly what I want. And I've decided that I think I'm gonna go with just text. So to make sure that the text shows at the end, I'm gonna cut off the white edges of the page. So we have page from, text from side to side. And text from top to bottom. So I don't want any white at the top or at the bottom. And now I'm, or well, I guess it doesn't matter on one end because we're gonna roll all of these the same way. I'm going to cut one half inch strips of just plain paper. And this is going to make a bead that is not um, angled or doesn't have that curvature, that, that triangular piece of paper did. So we'll roll this up. And once we get close to the end, we'll slip a little bit of glue on there. And there's my bead of text. So we'll get all of these rolled, all of them done. Let's go ahead and do just one more. A 
close it off with a little bit of glue and there we go and now I have a handful of text beads completed and a handful of those colorful beads created Let's just combine all those together and let's finish up our project So I purchased this UV light and UV resin. It was inexpensive. I will link the product in my Amazon storefront and you can find that two ways. I'll put the link to the Amazon storefront in the description below, but you could also go to my website, toolcrowsmixedmedia.com and go to my shop and find it under tools on my Amazon storefront. So I just put the bead on the skewer, squirted the RV, UV, not RV, UV resin onto the bead, and now I'm curing the bead for the recommended time. The light goes on and you leave it under there and I circled it and we have this beautiful little bead that's coated in resin and now it has a little bit of snap to it. So these beads have a, a high gloss finish now with the resin. They also clink when they hit the table. So they have a little bit of what I'm referring to as a snap to them. So it's not just a paper bead anymore. It is something that is upscaled a little bit. I actually made myself a necklace out of these paper beads. And when I wear it, I always get compliments on my necklace because it's so colorful, so unique, and so different. So to really finish these beads off, I have taken my gold paint pen and I am circling around the edge of the beads to give it that shiny gold edge. And I took that um, paint pen and kind of stuck it down inside the bead as well to, um, you know, just kind of give it some depth on the end. And I think this added a real nice finish to the bead. And in a quick afternoon, I think I might have spent an hour, two hours on these, I have a whole little jar full of these beautiful little beads that are glossy. They have this gold finish on each end. And it was, in my opinion, a very productive use of my time. So now I've pulled some 26 gauge copper wire. I'm going to make a loop on one end. And once I have that loop complete, I have pulled out just some beads that I've collected over the years. I have a huge um, tub of them or a huge um, tray of all of these different beads. And I'm going to pull out one of those beads. Um, I have some seed beads here. I have a few little pearls. I'm going to drop it onto that wire. Then I'll put one of my magazine page beads on and finish it off with maybe a, another little pearl and another little seed bead. So because I created that ring at the bottom to hold those beads on, and I'm going to create a ring at the top when, when I get this strung up, if you will, the, the way I would like it. I'm going to wrap that wire around the top loop. And then I think on some of these, I chose to take that excess wire and just wrap it around the beads and then um, secure it around the bottom again. Some, I cut the, the wire off just at the loop at the top. So that's up to you, personal preference. You'll see both when I give you the final images. Now I'm just touching up where I think it might use a little more gold. And there we have a nice looking little charm there. But now I want something to dangle off the end of it. 
And I had this little piece of etched copper that was in my, my tub, but I think I'd like to make my own little dangle. So I have these bird stamps and I shall pull out some of my shrinky dink material and stamp up one of these uh, bird images and stamp that right down on that shink, shinky dink, listen to me, shrinky dink material. And there you go. And that's an oops because I took his little feather bonnet right Ooh. off the top of that shrinky dink. So let's stamp that up once again. I'm just, I have a um, archival black ink, that ink pad, and I'm coating that stamp with the black ink. And now I'll just stamp it once again. And let me cut that out. And I'm, I've cut this two different ways. So in the first one that I do, I'm going to cut it just in a square. In subsequent, subsequent ones that I will create, I'm going to cut the complete outline out so that it is an actual bird-shaped sh charm. But let's start first with the one that's in, in the square. I'm going to round the corners on that. And then I'm going to take a minute to pull out some acrylic paint pencils or some, I'm sorry, they're watercolor pencils. And just color in that bird. And I've chosen to make this one red, like a cardinal. And I do have a cardinal that visits me frequently in my yard. I have cardinals and bluebirds that are the most dominant. Some finches, well, there's all kinds of feathered creatures out here, but the ones that are very pretty seem to catch your eye. So let's get him colored in bright red. I'll pull out a yellow pencil, do his little beak. We'll do the twig in some raw umbers and light browns in different colors and kind of put a little distinction there. Now that I have him all kind of colored in with those watercolor pencils, I'm coming back with um, one of my pens. It is a graphic three or a Pigma graphic pen, uh, archival ink that I purchased from Michael's, the big box store. And they come in all different various widths. And I'm using a, uh, well, what millimeter is this one? It's kind of defines, it is a number 12, is what I used on this. And just kind of outlined and defined that bird. And now the shrinky dink magic happens. You hit it with the heat gun, and that's a pretty good sized little piece of shrinky dink. Um, conforms down into a small little charm size. And, you know, of course it's um, hard. It's, it's, I'm, I'm sure you've all worked with the shrink plastic. So I'm gonna do one more. I'm gonna do the bluebird. The bluebird I'm gonna cut out. Um, I'm gonna cut completely around his outline. And, which I have done. And now I'm just taking the heat gun to him and he now is becoming this small little charm for me. And I didn't mention it, but I poked a hole in the top of each of the charms so that it would be there when this shrunk. 
And now I can put my little ring inside that hole and attach it to the beads that we just made, put together, and now can decorate with our little charms. So see how that will look? So I will get that with hooked on with a little ring, and then we can hook it to the spine of our books. We can dangle it on the edge of a page. It can be used in a lot of different ways. And that completes the use of magazine pages for this week. As you know, this is week three, I believe. Yeah, week three of the Coffee Cup Prompt magazine pages. We have one more week of doing magazines, and then we'll pull something else and see what we can come up with for the next four weeks. So thank you very much. If you'd like to follow along with the Coffee Cup Prompts, here's the playlist that you can click into and see what we've done since we began this in December. Or stop over to my Facebook page, Two Old Crows Mixed Media on Facebook. It's a Facebook group, not a Facebook page. And post your work and share with us what you are doing with magazine pages. Thank you so much, and bye for now.